The cableless Viva is spreading through our motherboards like a very contagious and uh, persistent kind of herpes. Uh, and giving somewhat of a second life to our Z790 chipset, which is about to depart. Um, and today we are reviewing the Z790 Project Zero from MSI. First of its kind, it shines, it shows off. In short, it is a good looking fella. Now, despite being the flagship of a new family and lineup of motherboard, some of you might recognize some topographic similarities with the Z790 Pro. And that is no coincidence because it is a redress Z790 Pro with the obvious difference of having uh, all of its cable plugs thrown on the other side of its PCB. And that means that we're dealing with a somewhat good quality entry level, that was the Z790 Pro, but it also means uh, not as a rich featured product. Now, starting with the obvious. The foundations are largely covered in the sense that we do have a six layered PCB reinforced with a two OS copper plates. So no obvious risks of PCI signal bleeding and a rather good sign for its overall life expectancy. But where I get really excited is on the overall design of that thing. I was very pleased with the ASOS Tough BTF aesthetics, but I should have held my tongue because this thing is absolutely Gorgeous. It does stay in the trendier white schemes, Asus 1.4, but it looks so much better. Now, since we have no power plugs, well, MSI decided to dress the entire board with thick brush aluminum plates and basically made it look like some kind of a space mineral metal artifact. No weird chip integrated LED, reinforcing that industrial engineering feel. The assembling experience is a big part of the attraction here. All the cables are behind and frankly talking, once you've experienced this ease of build and assembling, it's very hard to go back. But just keep in mind that you will need a chassis which is compatible with the back cable motherboards. And thankfully there are many more now than there was just uh, say a month ago. Now for the more technical aspect of things, we are seeing the last weeks of the LGA 1700, which will be replaced in October by Intel brand new LGA 1851. But for this one, it will end up supporting no less than three Intel core processors, which is kind of a record for Intel VRM wise. Well, no big surprises here. We have the same entry level solution we had seen on the Pro Series, which features a modest 14 plus one plus one direct phases, most of which are only 55 amps for a total of about 1200 amps, 1000 of which are CPU centric, which is adequate to run an i7 at most. Now I know what you're gonna say, a thousand amps is a lot, but not all 1000 amps VRM solution. Uh, are equal because where things get tricky are those 55 amps power stages because with the 13th and 14th generation of Intel Core processors, they will be pushed to 100% usage very, very fast, meaning that they will get really, really hot as well. And to its credit, MSI did its best to mitigate this. Our main block is fat and tall, shows off a large aluminum roof for some extra radiating area. The side block is no less thick and is equipped with protubating winglets for some uh, swapping, and both of them features a now standard double contact design, which will provide a thermal padded direct contact to PSPs and chokes alike, something I always underline in my reviews. Now, temperature wise, with the stock clocked i9-14900K running for about an hour, I got really close to 65 degrees Celsius on the block surfaces, which is considerably hotter than similarly priced motherboards, and no surprise coming from a maxed out, underpowered, underwhelming budget VRM. Better have a really well aired build. That I can tell you. And I would not want to see this board coupled with anything more than an i7 and, and not a K-Class if possible. Now, what I would have loved to see for nearly $300 motherboard is a different kind of power solution, such as the one we can see on the Z790 Tomahawk, which comes with no less than 16 90 amps power stages, much harder to max out, therefore stays much cooler, whilst being much more capable to handle high range processors 
and it would not have cost a single dime more to MSI since the Tomahawk retails at $210, giving it a lot of pricing space for the Project Zero to charge its design premium. But instead, we have an entry-level VRM with very, very hot 55 amps power stages, very disappointing power-wise and a little bit gritty coming from MSI. Not very happy here. Now, memory-wise, well, we got something new here since this is the first Z790 powered motherboard I have reviewed to support 64 gigabyte sticks, meaning it can handle up to 256 gigabyte worth of DDR5 RAM on a dual channel configuration. That means a couple of things. First, if it is available on this motherboard, it is available on all Z790 powered motherboards. So make sure to go on your motherboard support page download the BIOS and, and you'll have that unlocked for you. You'll go from 192 to 256 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM in a hot bit. The second thing is that we can have now larger single sticks, which holds more memory. We're going from 48 to 64. And since we can only hope to reach a 7.2 gigahertz maximum clock with a single stick, you can get more RAM going at that clock, if that makes any sense. So, so that's pretty pretty sweet now staying in the memory we have a very honest four m.2 solid state drive all of which enjoy a four lanes at pcie 4.0 bandwidth that means up to 64 gigabit worth of data swap per pcie 4.0 graded stick now i did say honest because we have zero pcie bifurcation how refreshing now no floor thermal pads but we still get very thick and large and pretty thermal padded heat shield, which do an awesome job. Nothing to re-say here. Overall, a mature and fast M.2 solid state drive based solution. Now, I would be amiss not to mention our six legacy SATA plugs, which have been sent on the dark side of our motherboard. Now, export wise, we have a simple yet efficient four PCI export setup. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU have access to its future proofing 16 PCI 5.0 lanes. Therefore, this is where you want your GPU placed for optimal all performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. The two other 16 slots are fed by either a fast 4 PCIe 4.0 lanes, great for some additional storage, or a single PCIe 3 lane, good enough for a capture card. And finally, you have a rather poorly placed and useless bachelor plug. Now, no fancy GPU extraction apparatus, which might be a detail for you MSI, uh, but is not for us because it really simplifies our building experience and doesn't really cost you anything more so yeah uh not good uh not happy here uh fix it now back ios well i do need to note a very good looking rather premium integrated backplate always a plus and starting from the left we have our flash bias button for a cpu less bias update a keyboard mouse ps2 a uh, plug for a zero latency gaming experience, I guess. Four legacy plugs, our display output, a couple of five gigabit plugs, a couple of high bandwidth plugs, including a 20 gigabit dual channel right here, our 2.5 gigabit LAN plug, an updated very low latency Wi-Fi 7, replacing the departing Wi-Fi 6E, a good point, and a budget-friendly codec cleansed by a generous 400 worth of microfarads capacitors. Well, a very limited and modest uh, back I.O. in my uh, opinion. And another reason why MSI should have chosen to take the Tomahawk as a foundational motherboard instead of the Pro, because we would have had so many more uh, high bandwidth plugs. Um, other than that, I'm happy to see the Wi-Fi 7. That's great. And the audio codec is also very medium. It'll work for a lot of the gaming and the streaming, but nothing really professional. So it is an average back IO. Now, front panel wise, well, uh, maybe we should start calling it back panel wise. We have our two second generation plugs, two five gigabit plugs at opposite side of the board for better access. I like that. A 10 gigabit type C, which is a premium feature, but what is really premium here is our Thunderbolt 4 card connector right here, which can provide up to 40 gigabit worth of bandwidth. Not that bad. Other than that, we have eight PWM fan connectors, one of which can double as an all-in-one water pump connector. Now that is about right for any equivalent motherboard. I do like the fact that they've been spread all around the canvas of our motherboard for an equally easy access. Finally, troubleshooting wise, well, apart from the flashback button we saw earlier, we got 
only our loyal easy debugger here to signal the main stages of our booting sequence and trying to give us some kind of a vague direction on where a problem may hide. And, and, and I regret this because again, we're talking at a board which will retail at about $290, $300 with taxes. At that price, you can have a QR code. You can have something that will give you much more of a, of a precise help on where uh, uh, your troubleshooting issues may be. So yeah. Now, in conclusion, the MSI Z790 Project Zero will cost you about $275 before taxes, which is quite a bit more than its pro foundation and, well, power-wise, won't do much more than an entry level can do. But what you are really buying here is a privilege to uh, uh, play around with a gorgeous cable-less build and showing off a uniquely well-polished product. And it shines even more when you compare it to its Asus Tough BTF board, which does today seem like an ugly duck when you see that glorious metallically populated motherboard. And the fact that you do not need a cableless GPU as Asus imposed on its Z790 powered BTF motherboard will allow a lot more people to make the switch. But my real unforgivable issue I have with this motherboard today, the Z790 Project Zero, is its pricing. Because it does look great. It is innovative, but on its hard specs, on what it actually can do as a gamer or as a product, or a production-minded build, is really the bottom of the MSI barrel. Uh, it's priced like a mid-range motherboard, but it really acts like a lower grade. And so the whole question remains: Should you buy it? And, and my gut says, wait for MSI or another manufacturer to actually take you seriously for your money and provide uh, a cableless motherboard with something inside worth buying, a great VRM, richly featured. You cannot expect people to buy, to put to pay so much more premium just for the cableless uh, aspect of things. I understand we have to finance the innovative drive, but not to that level. If I'm gonna spend $300, I want a gorgeous cableless motherboard who can act exactly like a classic motherboard I would have paid for the same price. Other than that, I'm telling you, put this motherboard aside, wait a couple months more, because I am sure they're going to release something much more worth your while, your time, and most importantly, your money.